David Koresh was born on the 17th of August 1959 in Houston, Texas. He died on the 19th of April 1993 at Mount Carmel Center. Coming from a dysfunctional background, Koresh was a member and later a leader of the Branch Davidian movement, a cult in Texas. In the early 1990s, he became a subject of allegations about polygamy and child sex abuse. Further allegations related to the Branch Davidian stockpiling of weapons led the Bureau of Alcohol and Tobacco and Firearms and later the FBI to launch a raid on the group's compound. Koresh had over 1,400 members in his cult. He was believed to have around 20 wives. He claimed he was a messiah and a prophet. After a 51-day standoff, Things took a turn for the worst, as authorities stormed the compound. So there'll be no excuses. In Psalms 40, you learn by the key of David, I waited patiently on the Lord. He inclined to me when he heard my cry. He brought me up out of a horrible pit and out of the miry clay, established my feet on a rock. Where's the rock at, class? Heaven. And established my goings. When Christ comes again into the world, is he going to walk in the light of his own mind or in the light of his Father's word? Father. He put also a new song in my heart. Many shall see it and fear and trust in the name of the Lord. Why would that be? Right? Offering and sacrifice, God is not required. My ears have to open. Burnt offering and sin offering, thou not desire. Then said I, one last offering, then said I, Lord. I come. In the volume of the book, it is written to me. I delight to do thy will, O God. Thy love is within my heart. Well, Revelation says Christ is going to come with a what? And who wrote it? And what's it about? The revelation of Jesus which God gave to who? To show unto his things which must shortly come to pass. Now, 2,000 years is not short. But when does Christ come? As soon as he receives... Lord. of which John the Revelator said he clearly this must be hereafter not the Catholic Church must be hereafter not the Lutherans or the Presbyterians or the Methodists or the Baptists or the Millerite or Adventists not all the uh, do you have bombs? Well, that's what they're going to be interested in Okay, so that's, your, that's why you need to get it done before you leave there then that's why okay. I'm going to complete it because you see you know as well as I do that people in this world, they want something dramatic and sensational. They don't want to have to sit. No one's going to sit there and let me sit there in front of a camera and read Psalms 40 to them to prove the first seal. Dick, it's a real world, and that's why I'm sympathetic with your position. I realize you're frustrated, and I agree with you. I'm not frustrated. I went home, and uh, I'm, I'm back. I'm no longer frustrated. I never was frustrated. Did you take a shower for me? Well, yeah, I took a couple of them for Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, now listen, let's get back to the point at hand, this, uh, you know, the writing of the seals, okay, you've got to do that from in there, and it's going to take you X amount of time, but just tell me this, David, are you saying that when you finish that manuscript... Then I'm not bound any longer No, my but, but see, that doesn't answer the question. Then I'll be out, yes, definitely. <clears throat> I know you'll be out, but that could... I couldn't... Excuse me, I've got a cold. That could mean a lot of things, David. That could mean... I'll in, be in, in custody, July. in the jailhouse. You can come down there and feed me banana. No, I know. I know at some point in time that's true, but I'm I'm getting from you. I'm asking you that when that is finished, are you then telling me that you are coming out th uh, the next day or two hours after you send that out? Well, I'll or probably what? when I when I bring it out. See, my attorney <clears throat> is going to get the get to the copy. Right. Okay. And as soon as he hands it over to the scholars, the theologians, mm -hmm. right, that's when he's going to come back, and that's when I'm going to go out with him, because he said point blank that, you know, one of the guarantees of me arriving down there is that he's going to go with me. You can go on paper here and said that David Koresh told me that as soon as he finishes this manuscript, the seven seals, of which you finished the first chapter dealing with the first seal, the seal right. that you're going to make that available. I'll be splitting out of this place. I'm so sick of MREs, Dick. 
that, uh... Well, I just want to make sure that I have this right, that you're coming out as soon as that's finished. That's what it was said by, well, the, I know. by the attorney. That's I know. what I'm saying. Okay. It's, it's clarified. Lock, stock, and barrel it. I mean, I've heard you say that you're coming out after, but that is not specific. You know, that's a game that we all it's, can play. Look, I know, Dick. But I'm but, asking you for your word. You yeah, say that you're coming yeah. out as soon as that's done, and you <sighs> gave up the manuscript to DeGaron, who's going to make copies available for Arnold and uh, the other the other fellow, right. the other biblical scholar, and then you are coming out I'm with out that here. manuscript. He's, he's going to come, and the way the procession is to be, I'm to go out first with him, and then I think you're last, right, Steve? With his attorney. Okay. And the other people, the other people in between. And then you know what? I'm keeping you from getting back to work. So I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to let you go so that you can get back to work because, David, frankly, I'm eagerly awaiting this manuscript. And well, I tell you what, it's going to blow your socks off. one of the tracks no one's going to hurt me or my family that's, that's 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 american policy here you could have arrested me any day as i jog up and down this road you could have arrested me going to town or going to walmart waco is going to bear witness against the atf the two agents across the street over here uh robert gonzalez i love the guy i was honest with him i brought him into my home he was going to stay here for two weeks. All this stuff you may, you guys may want to avoid and deny, you know. You know, he wanted to tour around a place. I promised him a tour. He could have talked to any of these guys around here, anybody. He was free to come and go as he chose. And I do not appreciate it, and never will I ever appreciate somebody coming here with two helicopters and cattle, cattle trailers and all that and uh, pushing people around with guns. Hey, I'll meet you at the doorstep any day, you know, and somebody will get hurt. If you want to keep playing that game, I'm talking to you. Somebody's going to get hurt because this ain't America anymore when the ATF has that kind of power to come into anybody's home and kick doors down and things like that. Now, I, I heard, I, and I do understand, someone reminded me of this, I do understand that one of the officers says his gun went off on accident. And that, you know, that was just like a signal and all that, you know. But look, besides the point, ATF, you boys are wrong. Your practices, your habits, yeah. Drug dealers, fine. You know, but even there's always a question. If there's any question whatsoever, the kids or women are involved, 
damn you, I tell you what, you keep your damn gun in your holster. You send a couple of big, brave, invincible kind of men, you let them knock on the door. If they're so damn involved to where they can risk their lives for the name of the law, then send them up, bulletproof, put them in some kind of uh, night armor or whatever, and let them knock on the door and ask the questions first. But no one's going to expect me when they come busting in on my door with guns drawn and pointed in the air and someone fired me, that I'm going to lay down and die for anybody. This just ain't going to happen in this country. God speaks to me. I have a message to present. You may not believe that. If you don't believe that, then believe this. Irrespective of God speaking to me. You see this here? See, this is my family. It may not be like your family. You know, it may not be like your family. This one here, you know, he's my family too, right, Joseph? Yeah. Tell him, tell him, you know, look in that camera and tell him what you think about it. Who treated you good? Is it? You know, do you mind that, son? Huh? Do you love Joseph? Is your best buddy? Yeah. Yeah. You too, Damon? So, you know, you guys, you guys, you have you do it your way, I do it my way. You got to argue with me, you catch me on the side of the road somewhere, you come and argue with me. You come point guns in the direction of my wives and my kids, damn it, I'll, I'll meet you at the door any time. And I'm sorry some of you guys got shot. But, uh, hey, God will have to sort that out, won't he? So we're going to send this tape out now. And I, I'm leaking in the back here. i got to get this taken care of. And uh, I'm hoping it gets stronger. And maybe we can send more tapes as issues develop. I do thank you guys. Sheriff Harwell, God bless you. And, you know, thanks for getting us the milk. And uh, what can I say? You just, um, they call me a rambling man, don't they? After the compound caught fire, 126 Branch Davidians died. This included 46 children, 82 killed, 35 released and 9 escaped from the fire. 4 ATF agents were killed, 16 were wounded. 6 were killed on February 28th, 76 were killed on April 19th, 11 were wounded. A total of 82 died. Stavidians still have followers today. On the anniversary they often have reunions at the Mount Carmel church that was left. Branch Davidians today teach peace and separate themselves from the Waco incident.